Hey, Katie, it's so funny to see you here. In this oh room. my gosh, I can't believe it. It's you. <laughs> Missed you so much. We only so talk much. a million times a day, um, <laughs> but we don't always show up on YouTube together. And we are today because we're talking about partnerships. How do you feel about yeah. our partnership, Alana? <laughs> Well, right now it's frustrating that we're not in the same place where we don't have to deal with the, um, you know, technical difficulties of Zoom. But I'm excited because I feel like a lot of our best conversations are when we're just kind of talking back and forth, nothing planned, nothing prepared, just us having a conversation. And that's what we're going to do today is talk about just having a partnership and what we've learned. And yeah, it's going to be great. Because yeah. when I first set out to start my art business, I thought you could only, like, I just own, had it in my head that I was going to have to do it alone. And this partnership kind of fell into place on accident, but it was a very happy accident. And it has made my life and my career a lot better and richer. And uh, I've ended up in a, you know, really exciting, but different place than I expected. So we want to talk about partnerships and expose people to the idea that, hey, you don't have to work alone in an art business. So true. And something that really stuck with me was when Emily McDowell, she's an amazing artist. She said, you know, she named her company, Emily McDowell. And she was like, when I started hiring employees, it was so weird because, you know, pre pandemic, they were answering the phones in the studio, Emily McDowell, <laughs> and like, oh, hey, Emily. And she was like, no, it's not Emily. So she, I think, changed to like Emily and friends. And that's a pretty simple pivot, you know? And so I had the same thing. I was like, well, I need a brand name because I'm going to have employees. But the thing is like, none of that nuance really matters. You'll figure it out. Um, the, I, I didn't see myself having a partnership because I, as I hired contractors, I had a hard time finding someone who was like as invested emotionally mentally, physically, financially as me, because it was my work. And so the fact that Katie and I were able to find that feels like pretty insane that we were able to find that with someone we had, we only just met in person a couple months ago. And so there's a lot of things we've learned along the way. The, the biggest takeaway is that we, I think one of the biggest reasons that we've been successful or we feel successful, because obviously that looks different for everyone is that we have found um, a clear line of communication where we can talk to each other and that we really, uh, our skill sets complement each other. They don't compete with each other. And so as we work more and more together, we're able to say, hey, I think you're stronger here. Would you help me on this? Or would you take this? I completely trust that you can work on this and you'll do exactly what I was thinking, but with your special zone of genius. And so we can, we've both kind of found those, which I don't think I knew what mine really were until we started working together and they became clear because the things I was good at, I excelled. And then the things that I was not great at, Katie was able to come in and say to me like, oh, like, what about this? And I was like, oh, you're really good at this. So it yeah. helped both of us develop personally and professionally when we started working together. Yeah. We both really highlighted the good parts of each other. And we've kind of found where we where we completed the other one. And um, interestingly enough, we're very on very like opposite sides of what we're good at, which has worked out so well. Um, and that was not planned, but it's just worked out. And I would suggest like, if you're looking for a partner to look for someone who um, is a contrast to you instead of the exact same kind of viewpoints on things, because that's so helpful. And it's so helpful to filter through like, if we're trying to, to figure out what we're going to do next or figure out how to respond to an email, even something as small as that, we have two different viewpoints, two different perspectives. So it's really helpful to like bounce off of each other like that. Yeah. And I think another thing is that having a partner for me, like it gives me a sense of validation. If I'm having an idea or a thought or I'm spiraling and I can check with Katie, often she'll come in with maybe the she'll understand and validate that I can feel my feelings, but then also might come in with a different perspective and say, what if you flip the table? And we all want validation. And so finding a partner who can offer you that in a really like sincere and kind way is obviously wonderful, but also our styles are different. So when it comes to lettering, like what is a parallel is our like core values and our beliefs and our goals, but our lettering style 
is completely different, which really becomes irrelevant in the business that we have. But it's cool because when we have worked on lettering projects, we're able to kind of find a happy medium where each of us can bring a skill set to the table. And so if you're looking for someone to do like design work with, you don't have to work with someone who has the exact same style as you because when you put them together, it can be even stronger. So that was an interesting thing that we've recently navigated. I think there's lots of different ways that you can format a partnership. I mean, Alana and my business is obviously um, more like education, teaching artists how to run their businesses. But I mean, like Alana just said, if you're running your own art business or like a branding studio, you could um, either make it work to where you brought in somebody else who has a different voice, or you could bring somebody on who um, can help you execute your vision. Uh, That's kind of another way to do a partnership. Uh, I think it's just really cool to be creative about the kind of partnerships that you can create because just because you have the idea of like, I'm an artist, I have to sit alone and like brood in my studio. That might be the kind of ultimate trope of like what we think an artist is, but um, especially with the internet and the connectivity opportunities that we have now, there's so many different ways that we can innovate and create with other people. And that is really fun kind of flavor to bring to your everyday and bring to your business. Add a little spice. Yeah, you bring spice to my life for sure. Sweet. Um, So I think one of the other things when you're working with a partner, I mean, we bring, like Katie said, like we've really been able to complement each other. And so we've learned what each one of us is good at. And so I want to talk really quickly about like what roles we each have in our business. I mean, we, we didn't even like talk about this beforehand, but I kind of think um, like Katie is really good at writing copy and coming from uh, a strategic standpoint. And so that's something where I'll be like, okay, oftentimes I'll do a messy first draft because I'm more impulsive and I like to just get all my ideas out there and see how, like see what sticks to the wall immediately where Katie is more thoughtful in her approach. So sometimes I'll do a messy first draft and run it by Katie for some polishing touches. And the same thing goes for like when we're doing a project for um, like a design project is I could do a really messy rough draft and she can come in and really, really polish it. Um, So she's really great at putting that finesse and extra detail on things, which is not where I say is my, that's not where I shine, (laughs) which is not a bad thing. I shine in other places. And so that's been cool to kind of figure out, which at the beginning, we obviously did not know this about each other. Yeah. And I I remember when we were setting up the LLC, our lawyer was like, what are your titles? What are your roles? And we were like, uh, Uh, (laughs) Um, and still, I don't think we have, uh, we're both just co-founders. I don't know that we've, um, renamed ourselves or anything, but we've still kind of found our lanes that we work in and like a flow that works based on what we've discovered are our strengths and our weaknesses. And Alana is really great at the um, people relationship stuff and really great at improvising and responding in the moment. Whereas I, I need some more time. I like to plan. I feel a little nervous when I have to respond in real time. Um, so she's really great at all of that. And she's, um, you know, taken a lot of the social media relationship building stuff. And I've taken a lot of the back end um, strategy stuff. And I think that's kind of how we see most of the division. And then, um, you know, we talk everything out. That's like a big plan, like a big next step for the business. And then we divide and conquer based on our skill sets. Yeah. And we have, like I said it before, we have an open line of communication where we talk really regularly. We love Marco Polo because you can really like convey emotion or um, audio messages through your phone. But I think the other thing is that we also have the freedom to like stay in our zone of genius. So we'll assign each other things, but like Katie might say, do you want to work on this? Or do you want me to? And I can be like, I definitely don't want to work on that, (laughs) which is really nice. And also we've started hiring help and for things that we know that someone can do better than us. 
And there's so many ways you can do that, whether it's a partnership or a contractor. But I think the biggest thing is that we both are equally as um, present, whether that's financially, mentally, emotionally, whatever. We're, we both care about this the same amount. And if we didn't, there would be a definite push and pull about like you're pulling more weight or you are. And so that's like probably the biggest thing. And that just came with time, I think, because of at the beginning, we didn't know each other at all. Like we were not friends first. We did not know anything about each other over DMs. This wasn't like a built up relationship over time. We were just, oh, hey, we're working on the same thing. Why don't, why don't we collaborate? And we also both take on projects outside of this. At, this. at the time of this video, we both have side projects that the other person is not involved in. And we make sure that's really a clear line. Um, but there have been times where we've let that Kind of spill over and that's been really fun too is to say i have this design project that's totally separate do you want to work on it with me and just kind of see how we did and we learned a lot during those experiences too which was really fun mm -hmm. i think that people want to know do we fight yeah like in the mud <laughs> pit with fists out uh no i we no but but also i think we'll call each other out or we'll just like we're, we're adults. So, um, you know, yeah. this is a different relationship than it would have been like 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. And I think if one of us is feeling like sad or frustrated or like maybe one of, I mean, this has not happened, but if one of us said something that the other person, like it hurt their feelings, I think we would just say that kind of hurt my feelings. And you'd be <laughs> like, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to, you know, and I think just having that open line of communication and understanding that we're different people we mentioned this the other day, but if you can understand, figure out like the A love languages or the um, way someone like Enneagram or the way someone works, like the DISC challenge, how does someone want to be spoken to? And so Katie and I have learned that, like she said, she likes more time to process. So I'm not going to blow up her phone. Well, I am going to blow up her phone, but I'm not going to expect a response right away. And I think Katie would know if I didn't respond to her that something was probably wrong. <laughs> yeah, so, we definitely yeah. have different communication styles and we've had to learn um, what, and, and there's so much empathy helps so much because just being willing to kind of step in the other person's shoes and, and try to understand how they're feeling and that they see things different than you do. Um, I think that's really important versus just like, getting frustrated and putting a wall up and bitching about it to your husband or something, <laughs> yeah, which I do I constantly. I'm, he's constantly like, oh, Alana again. No. <laughs> I, I think, I think we, yeah, we're both just so excited to be doing this and we have this great back and forth and this open line of communication. And the biggest thing is that we have the exact same value, the exact same big goal. And so the way we get there or the way we might've done it on our own might've been different, but we've just been proven, it's been proven to us time and time again, that if we do it together, we get there faster and stronger or not, yeah, faster and stronger for sure. Because my, two brains is, is more powerful, but it's two brains that work together. And so I think with friendships, it can be hard. I remember I wanted to start something with a friend and you know, some things just fizzle out but I don't think a partnership is easy. I wouldn't recommend it to everyone. Like if you love working alone, then like maybe you don't want a partner. Um, but especially during this pandemic time, having someone to just have human connection with has been great. After the pandemic, you're done though, Katie. <laughs> I'm great. I gotta <laughs> figure out something else to do. Carpentry? <laughs> um, That's perfect for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, so I was in another kind of partnership situation, but I was in a leadership position and I had like volunteers under me for a side project that I was running. And, um, that went awry because we were all friends first. And this was my first time trying to do any kind of partnership. I didn't know anything about it. It was my first real like leadership moment. Um, and because the power disparity was different because it was my ultimate, my project and my final say, uh, and I had more invested in it. There was just a lot of conflicts because I think, you know, I felt protective of my idea. I had a really clear vision for it. Um, and I wasn't doing the best job of like 
incorporating other people's ideas and like finding a middle ground. Um, and then they felt like they weren't being heard. And uh, they also didn't want to work in the project as much as I did. And I felt resentful because I was like, why aren't you doing as much work as me? And they're like, because we don't have a stake in it like you do. Um, they didn't say that, but that's what the reason was, which I've discovered with time. So yeah, we've mentioned this a couple of times in this talk, but I think the biggest takeaway to address upfront is to make sure you are not setting your up, yourself up for that power disparity or for uh, a lack of a difference in how much you care and how much you want to put in. And if there is going to be a difference, you need to figure out a fair way to reflect that in like your equity or ownership of the business or the amount that you get paid, you know? Yeah. I think one thing is that volunteers in general, like there's always going to be a lot yeah. of not conflict, but volunteering is a lot of heart and a lot of soul and it is often thankless. And so there's a lot of, a lot to unpack there, but you know, that's not the case that we have here, obviously, but the other thing is we obviously hired a lawyer to write a partnership agreement and we spent like several hours on a call working through what that looks like and talking what about happens. what happens if we die <laughs> and other things too like <laughs> you know what if someone wants to leave or what if someone isn't fulfilling their duties and also what if I said duties and it made me <laughs> yeah because we're 12 yeah exactly <laughs> um and then the other thing was like responsibility, like what do I, what do I owe Katie? Like in terms of keeping her informed, like how much freedom do I have to, to, for example, a purchase, if I want to make a purchase, there's a certain amount of purchases we can make without letting the other person know, because, you know, we're adults, we can make purchases with our business, but over a certain amount, we need to obviously communicate and talk with it. So even little things like that, uh, our lawyer helped us really set in stone. So we knew how to keep the other one informed. And, you know, I think we also respect each other's personal space too. And that, that open line of communication, I am such a broken record whenever I talk about these things, but that is huge. Like say to someone, I'm unplugging for an hour, like, don't call me. Or like, I'm taking the weekend off offline. If you can respond to this or, Hey, do you want to do this? I don't want to do it. Things like that. I think really like they seem so small, but they really add up and they help not only your mental health, but like your professional health as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got a dog that's like staring at me about to bark. I'm just waiting. You just going to try it. it. Let's see just what happens. Do it. <laughs> so yeah, I think all in all, we've had a great experience and I, I guess our in conclusion advice would be to like, look for someone who's, if you're looking for someone, look for someone who's equally as you have the same core values, you, you're equally as invested, or you have really clear defined roles of where your responsibilities lie. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And um, to also let things evolve over time to uh, just because there's, you know, a, an initial conflict or something that you don't understand, try to understand the underlying factors that are going into it. And then usually the root of the conflicts are going to be that somebody feels like they're in an unfair situation or they're having to do more of the work. Um, so pay attention to those and don't give up. If you see that situation, like try to work through it and see how it evolves because Alana and my, uh, of evolution has been ongoing and we've gotten to a really, really good place. So I'm glad that we, you know, stick it out whenever we have like yeah. anything to work out. Yeah. And follow up for next week's video where we talk about how we don't get along. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> That's not going to happen. But um, I think the other thing was like, yeah, giving it time and kind of treating it like it's a job. Because when you enter into a partnership and you're not only responsible to yourself, you have to step into a role and treat, yes, entre you're still an entrepreneur, but you have to step into a role and remember that it is a job and you do have a responsibility and so if you can put on that hat and remember that, like, even if you were working in an office, you would have conflict, you would have problem solving. And just because it's problem solving or conflict doesn't mean it's bad. Like it can actually be where the biggest breakthroughs come through. And, 
anytime you problem solve, you're going to learn something, whether that's how you need to talk to someone or how you need to work with someone. I think those are really teaching moments. And obviously they're very challenging, but you can look at it and say, what am I, bless you. What am I learning from this? I think that's, um, that's great. Yeah. So I hope this has been helpful just to hear us talk about our experience and what we've pulled out of it. Um, and we would love to hear like your experiences with past partnerships, successes, failures, or, you know, any questions that you have, if you want to drop those in the comments. Yeah. And what do you want to see from us next? Do you like this back and forth style? Do you want us to have more conversations where we're just candidly talking to each other? Let us know. And I guess we'll see you next time. Yeah. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. All right. <laughs> see you next time.